Today's topic is mineral identification. So yesterday we talked about minerals in general and what they're made of. And today our focus question is going to be what are the physical and chemical properties used to identify minerals? So like we talked about yesterday, minerals have some chemical properties and they must, must possess these following qualities. They must be solid. It must be crystalline, meaning it has a repeating arrangement of atoms. It must be naturally occurring. It must be inorganic, which means there's no carbon, or also it means that it's not made up of living things or once living things. And it must have a specific chemical composition. So if you look at this picture, we have a picture of both graphite and diamond. And you'll see that in the um, pictures, we have this crystalline structure, and it's a solid, and it shows a very specific chemical composition. When we talk about inorganic, we're talking about an area where oxygen rules the domain. So oxygen is the main player in an inorganic area. When we talk about organic, we're talking about carbon. Anytime you see the word organic, you can think of carbon. Carbon rules this domain. So or, organic means anything that is living or was once living. And that means that it will possess carbon. Inorganic talks about these things where carbon is not present, like cement or rocks. So minerals also have some physical properties. Um, we talked about their chemical properties and the solid, the crystalline, and the naturally occurring ideas. But their physical properties include a few different things. One is color, the color of the mineral. So it's very straightforward. The physical property is the actual color of the mineral. The other one is streak. And this is the color of the mineral's pow powder. This is very often different from the color of the whole mineral. So although you may see one color while looking at it, once you do a streak test where you drag the mineral across the surface, the powder may actually be a different color. The next one is called luster, and this is how shiny it is. Another physical property is density, and this is the mass per volume. And it's typically reported in specific gravity. So the units is something we call specific gravity, which is the density relative to water, meaning how dense is this material when compared to water? That's what it means when it says relative to water. Will it float in water or will it sink in water? The next one is called cleavage. And this is the mineral's tendency to break along planes of weakness. So how easy is it to break this mineral in different spots where there may be some weakness? The next property that we can distinguish a mineral by is called a fracture. And this is the pattern in which a mineral breaks. Does it break in a straight line or does it break like a spider web? The other one, the last one that we're going to talk about is called hardness. And this is which minerals it can scratch and which minerals can it it cannot scratch or which ones can scratch it so when we're looking at minerals their hardness is determined using a scale and you want to see what can actually scratch this mineral and what can this mineral scratch and leave a mark on so in order to do this we use something called the Mohs hardness scale and it goes from 1 to 10. So you'll notice that at the bottom um, left side, we have these different minerals listed up the side in increasing hardness. So talc we talked about being baby powder or this very like easy powder to break apart or this easy mineral that we can use for grip and things like that. And as we go all the way up to a diamond, we go from a 1 to a 10. And those common objects that these might be equivalent to are listed on the left side. So talc is not as hard as a fingernail, but fluorite is a little bit harder than a fingernail. So if you were to look at these, so in this case, a fingernail would scratch talc, but talc would not scratch a fingernail. And 
fluorite could scratch a fingernail, but a fingernail cannot scratch fluorite. So that's how we read this scale. And then this picture just shows you a couple things in descriptions. So color is one of the easiest ones to see. Luster, like we talked about, is the shininess or the way that the mineral surface reflects light. Hardness, we use that Mohs scale we just talked about. And then the color of a mineral's powder when it's scratched on a special plate called a streak plate is how we figure out how what mineral we are dealing with. Go ahead and move on to your online interactive lab. The instructions are in your packet. Don't forget to take your exit ticket at the end of your packet.